All right, something for the math. Easy solution. Try to discuss further into partial fraction decomposition. And now look at improper fraction. I'll explain what that is in a bit. Uh, basically, in my earlier videos on partial fraction decomposition, I covered cases where the, de where the denominator of the rational function that we were decompo decomposing had a higher degree than the numerator. And what, what I mean by degree is, if you look at, uh, these are the examples that I covered in my earlier videos. This The denominator here, this is going to be an x times by x. That's going to be x squared versus the top. It's an x on there. So the degree is in the bottom is degree 2. And the top of the numerator is degree, well, 1 here. And if you look at this example, there's an x times that you're eventually going to have an x cubed. So it's going to be x4 versus x squared. So degree 4 versus degree 2. So all of these have higher degrees. If you check this one out, this is x times x squared. That's x cubed versus the top, which is an x. And now over here, you have an x squared power of 3. That's an x6. But you're eventually going to multiply an x squared. So your highest uh, power would be x to the power of 8. And then versus the top, that's x4. So the, the degree in this case is 8 versus the numerator is 4. So this is yeah, considered a proper function. Yeah, and basically when, when the degree of the numerator is larger, as in all these cases, and the degree of the numerator, yeah, then the degree of the numerator, this is called a proper function. But when the degree of the, num of the denominator is smaller or equal to uh, the degree of the numerator, it is called, yeah, it's called an improper function when, whenever this happens. And this definition is the same for basic fractions. For example, if you were to look at uh, 3 over 4, if you just look at a basic uh, fraction like this, this is a proper uh, fraction. But if you look at 7 over 4, again, this one is uh, improper, or even if you had 4 over 4. Because that, that's the numerator is equal to the, the uh, denominator. So again, th these are improper uh, fractions right here. Now, partial fraction decomposition the, with the techniques that I went over in my earlier video only works. Uh, yeah, these only work for basically proper functions. So for improper fractions, we first need to use polynomial long division. See my earlier videos in the video description below to basically initially break down the fraction, which will yield an, a remainder, and then then we could uh, then we'll have a proper uh, fraction involved, and then then we could uh, solve or decompose the, the fraction further. For example, uh, consider uh, this example right here, and also uh, the fact that partial fraction decomposition doesn't work. Well, I'll explain that why it doesn't work for improper fractions in a later video when I go in detail of why that is. Basically, if we look at uh, this example right here, this is a degree, uh, yes, the numerator, is, the, the numerator has a degree 5, so degree 5 a numerator, and then a degree uh, 3 right here in the uh, denominator. So this is improper. So what we have to do is first break this down using polynomial long division and the way we do that we have to set it up we would write the denominator here it's similar to regular long division and now we do this and then we write the numerator up top so we're dividing the numerator by this denominator 4 plus x 3 plus x plus 5 and now what we have to look at is is something that multiplies by this x cubed to get x5, and, and in this case, that's just basically x squared. Because when we multiply x squared with x5, that's going to be x5. So, so what we do now is multiply this x squared throughout all of these. We'll get an x to the power of 5. Then this is going to be minus 2x4. Now this could be an x uh, cubed. Both water on. Yeah, and now over here, we get uh, this x squared minus uh, times it by minus 2, that's going to be minus 2x squared. And now we basically uh, subtract this all from here. And notice that there's no minus, there's no x squared factor in this top here. So what this means, if we subtract all of these, we get this x5 cancels. This uh, negative 2x4 is the same thing. They just cancel with this. x cubed cancels. Now we'll have a 0 minus this 2x squared. That's going to be, well, plus 2x squared.
So that's all we get, and then uh, and then this is the remainder brings it down plus x plus five. So this is our remainder right here. So what this means is is now that this entire f uh, function right here, yeah. So this entire function equals now x squared, and now we just add well the uh, remainder, and the remainder is just two x plus x plus five, and now divided by the denominator x cubed two x squared plus x minus two. And as you can see, when we do this, we have now a degree. Uh, three in the numerator, I mean a degree uh, three in the denominator, so degree two over uh, degree three. So numerator uh, and then versus denominator. So this is a proper fraction right here. So now we could apply uh, partial fraction decomposition like I went over in my earlier video. So we just take this uh, by itself, two x squared plus x plus five, and now look at x3, 2x squared, plus x minus 2. So now what we could do here is, well, first, uh, this one here, we, we could try to yeah, factor this out. And the way uh, to do that here is, is if we look at this, try to write this part right here as a, well, there's going to be an x cubed right there. So we'll have it as let's say an x squared plus we'll, we'll say a times it by x plus uh, b right here yeah so if we write it out like this if we expand this out this would be just x cubed just multiply by this by this plus now we have uh, b and x squared b x squared now this is going to be now a times x and then plus a times b so we have this so if we equate that with over here equals let's just equate it and then solve for what b and a have to be just so we can get this factored there you can learn more about factor in my earlier video in the video link below so 2x squared plus x minus 2 so the only way that these are equal is is if basically uh, in this case here bx squared is equal to negative 2x squared or just ignore the x's so we have b equals negative 2. And there's uh, negative 2 right there. So it would be equals negative 2. And in this case, a equals to 1. And now to make sure that this holds, look at a times b right here. So a times b equals to, has to equal to negative 2. And that equals, well, there's a 1 times by negative 2 and equals negative 2. So we have our a and b. So what we could write now is write this down as 2x squared plus x plus 5. Uh, this, this is equal to x squared plus 1 times by x minus 2. So we have our factors. And now we could use partial fraction decomposition. And now since this is a nonlinear partial fraction, we have to write it like I showed in my earlier video, ax plus b over x squared plus 1. Now plus here, this is just a linear uh, factor, so c minus uh, x minus 2. So this is what we have to do, and I have to solve for a, x, and uh, we have to solve for a, b, and c. So now, the, now what we do here is just multiply uh, both sides, uh, yeah, multiply both sides by the denominator right here, just so we can get rid of uh, the denominators on all all the sides by basically x squared plus one times x minus two. So when we do this, the tops will cancel. So we'll get a two x squared plus x plus five is equal to a x plus b times it by uh, this x squared plus one cancels. So we have an x minus two. And now here we'll have a c times it by <coughs> x squared plus 1, the x minus 2 cancels. So now uh, a good method of solving these is selecting values for x. So in this case, if we put, if you look at here, if we let x equals to 2, then this whole thing cancels and we're just left with c. So at x equals 2, because remember, whatever the x value is, the coefficients a, b, and c have to always be the same. So at x, at x equals 2, we get, or let's write at, x equals 2, we get now 2 times 
x squared, that's 4 plus 2 plus 5 is equal to this whole thing cancels. C times now x squared, that's just 4 plus 1. That's 5. So we get here, uh, we get 8 plus 2 plus 5. So we have 10 plus 5, that's 15, is equal to C times 5. So we get C is equal to, well, 15 divided by 5, that's just 3. And now the ne next thing we could do is if we look at over here, if we let x equals to 0, this removes the a, and we already know what c is, so we just solve for b. So what we have now is at uh, x equals to 0, we get, well, this is going to be, well, 5 is equal to, and now this cancels, so we have b times, well, 0 minus 2, so minus 2, plus c, which is 3, times by x squared plus 1, well that's 0, so that's this is going to be uh, times by 1, so we just plus 3. And now solving this, what we get now, move this over, we get, uh, move this over here, 5 minus 3 is 2, so 2 equals 2, b times negative 2, divide these out, we get b is equal to negative 1 right here. And now the last one, we could just yeah, select x as anything and then just solve for a, and in this case, let's do the simplest one, x equals to 1. So at x equals to 1, we get, uh, this becomes, well, 2 plus, um, yeah, 2 plus 1 plus 5 is equal to, and now we get a plus b, which is going to be minus 1, and then times it by 1 minus 2, that's just minus 1. And now plus c, which is a 3. And now 1 plus 1, that's just 2. So times by 2. So now we solve for all this. This is going to be 3 plus 5, that's 8, minus 6. So we bring this over to the left side. So 8 minus 6, that's going to be, well, 2. So 2 is equal to, now we just add these uh, negatives inside. Yeah, we get negative. Actually, no, we'll keep that there. So a minus 1, negative 1. So divide by the negative 1 out. So we get negative 2 is equal to a minus 1. And now what we can do is plus 1 on both sides. So we get um, a, or just move this over to this side, a equals to negative 1. So we get our a, our b, and our c. So now if we put everything together, we got our original function here. This equals to, well, x squared. And now we plus, um, now, now we plus, and then we get down to where this was. So we, we add this part, or it equals to here. So a times x, x plus b over x squared plus 1, where a and b are both, um, in this case, negative 1. So we get yeah, plus uh, negative x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. So now uh, the last part is, well, we have to add the c. So what is c divided by x minus 2? And that's just 3. So we have a plus 3 over x minus 2. And now this, you could simplify it further. If you want, just take the negative out. Depends on whatever uh, your textbook uh, uses or your school uses for um, default. So we'll just have it an x plus 1. Just take the negative out x squared plus 1 plus 3 minus x minus 2. So this is what I'm used to, and all that's our answer. Yeah, anyways, uh, that's all for today. Hope you learned from this uh, pretty extensive example on how to solve, uh, how to decompose improper functions. In later videos, I'll go in more depth in uh, proving why we can't use partial fraction decomposition for improper functions, why we have to use polynomial division before we actually uh, decompose the fraction. I'll go over that and also um, further on partial fraction decomposition in later videos and a more concrete proof of all of the techniques that I use. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this video and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.